Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, I would like to um, present you a couple of problems uh, related to vector arithmetics, like addition, multiplication, the constant, etc. Now, these problems are quite trivial, uh, but I would like to use this opportunity to uh, basically tell about certain standard uh, symbolics uh, which, which are used in the vector arithmetic. So what I will be uh, using for vectors are usually lowercase Latin letters uh, with arrow or just a bar on the top, depending on. And if this is a vector, then in its tuple representation, I will try to use the same letters as coordinates with indices. Like this is a three-dimensional tuple representation of uh, vector B. Now, another thing is length of the vector. Now, the length, uh, I will use double bars. That's the length. Um, by the way, um, sometimes the length is, uh, is called a norm. Norm. Of the vector. Now, this is the term which is borrowed from um, a little bit more abstract concept of vector spaces. Um, so, norm or length, uh, just exactly the same. So, I will use it. And uh, obviously, in this particular case, I can uh, I can always say that this is. three-dimensional length, or norm of the vector V, expressed as um, an ex algebraic expression uh, uh, of its uh, tuple representation. In this case, it's three-dimensional coordinate system. All right, so that's all about uh, different uh, symbols which are used. Now let's just do the problems. OK, the first problem. Let's consider a vector V with double representation V1, V2. Let's say it's two-dimensional, actually, for three dimensional, it would be exactly the same. Now, let's consider the vector, which is the result of multiplication of this particular vector V by some real number K. Now, what happens with coordinates? Well, the theorem states that coordinates are also multiplied. So multiplication of the vector by a constant results in the tuple representation, multiplication by this constant, every component of the tuple representation. So every coordinate of the vector. Now, let's just consider this as a geometric problem. OK, this is my coordinate system. And this is my vector. So these are v1 and v2 coordinates of this vector. Now, if I multiply by, well, let's say in this case, a positive constant first, what happens? Well, direction is the same of the result of the multiplication by the constant, but the length is increasing by that particular number. So let's say k is something like 2, for instance. doesn't really matter. So this line goes twice as long. Now, what's co what are the coordinates of this next vector? So if this is v, this is kv. So from 0 to a, from 0 to a is v. And from 0 to b is k times v. Now, it's quite obvious that triangles uh, a1, a2, b1, b2. Triangles uh, OA, a1, and OB, b1 are uh, similar, obviously, right? Because we know that the triangles are 
right triangles, right? Because this is right angle. Now, this angle is retained, it's common, it's shared, because when we multiply the vector by some number, we retain direction. Direction is an angle, so the angle is exactly the same, which means another angle is also the same. So, two right triangles with the same angles, they're obviously uh, similar, which means that everything is proportional. Now, since the proportion of the hypotenuses is k, it's exactly the same proportion of uh, cagetus. Uh, OA1 relates to OAB1 as OA to OB. So this is exactly the same. Same thing with cagetus AA1 relative to BB1. So the same coefficient of proportionality exists for the length of the vector itself, which is hypotenuse, and on each cagetus, which is which are coordinates of the of the top of representation. So that's why it's true. Um, now, for a negative uh, k, situation is absolutely the same because all it does is just reverse the the picture towards the other direction. So if this is k, this would be uh, multiplication. I mean, if this is v vector then this would be multiplication by negative. Uh, and since direction is changed on the opposite, these angles are still the same, which means that, again, the triangles are similar and the proportionality between the lengths of the hypotenuses would be exactly the same as, as the coefficient of proportionality between the catalysts. Uh, and um, and obviously, if this is positive, then this is negative, and that would be uh, that would signify that the, the same sign of k is the coefficient of proportionality between the category uh, of this and category of these triangles. So positive or negative k, everything is exactly the same. It's all similarity of uh, triangles. Now. What happens? Uh, okay, so we have actually um, found that the multiplication of the vector by a constant is basically reflected in the tuple representation as multiplication of each component by this particular constant. That's done. Now, how about the lengths of the vector? So, if you will take if you will take the lengths of this vector which is the result of multiplication of the vector v by k, that's the new vector, and what's its length? Well, we know that the length of uh, the vector multiplied by a constant is supposed to be, obviously, longer uh, by that particular constant, right? Now, the only thing, I cannot really write this way because k might be uh, negative. So this is a true length, right? So this is all with the positive thing. So we cannot just have plain k. We have to pay absolute value of k. So absolute value of k times norm of the vector v is the norm of the vector k v. So that's the, that's the second uh, problem. So multiplication by a vector by any uh, real number results in uh, the lengths being multiplied by absolute value of that particular real number. That's the number two problem. Okay, now what happens with uh, coordinates of the vectors when we add them up? Let's say you have two vectors, V and W, in tuple representation and again, I'm using two-dimensional case because it's easier to draw. Basically, it, it, it's the same for any dimension. Uh, so, what happens with tuple representation of the sum of these two vectors? Okay, let's just uh, write the answer. Now, the tuple representation of the sum of two vectors uh, is sum of
sum of the corresponding coordinates. Now, uh, well, this is for three-dimensional case. Now, we, we have two-dimensional case. All right. How can we make sure that this is true? Well, let's just go again geometrically. So let's say we have vector v, and this is vector w. Now, when we want to add them up, you remember the rule. We take the vector w, and we attach it at the end of the vector v by parallel shift, forming the parallelogram, right? So if this is A, this is B, this is C. So a C vector is exactly the same as O B. And this is W. Alright? Now, let's think about coordinates. This coordinate, A1, this is B1, and this is C1. Now, obviously, since we took this OB and parallel shifted to AC, then the coordinates of the OC would be greater than coordinates of, of A by the coordinates of the OB, right? So the coordinate of OB, the X coordinate in this particular case, is OB1. So what I'm saying is that OC1 is equal to OA1 plus o, uh, uh, AB. Uh, Sorry, OC1 is equal to OA1 plus A1C1, right? But A1C1, this one, it's projection of this particular vector, HC, onto the x-axis, which is exactly the same as projection of OB, right? So that's equal to plus OB1. This is the same vector as this one. So projection of this vector onto the x-axis, which is A1C1, is exactly the same as projection of this vector on the same axis, which is o, o, OB1. And this is, obviously, OA1 is projection of the vector OA on the x-axis, which is V1. And OB1 is W1, projection of the OB, uh, of the vector W on the x-axis. So OC1, this is an x-coordinate of the sum of these two vectors, right? I didn't draw the sum, but this is the sum, right? OC as a vector is equal to OA as a vector plus OB as a vector. So, that's what it is with x-coordinates. Now, projection onto y-axis is exactly the same, the same logic, everything is the same. So, that's why the projection on the y-axis of the sum of two vectors would be sum of its projections. So, when you sum two vectors in their uh, tuple representation, you just add the corresponding coordinates. Um, but by, by the way, the first problem was when you multiply a uh, vector by a constant, uh, you multiply corresponding components uh, of the tuple representation. Now, when you add two vectors, you correspondingly add coordinates uh, in the tuple representation. So it's a very, very natural and very easy to remember rule, basically, right? All right. Uh, how about difference? Uh, okay, I'm sure you expect this, which is absolutely correct. Um, now, um, I, I can probably prove it in many different ways, but uh, let's say for a second, um, if V minus W equals U, what does it mean? It means V is equal to U plus W. So U have to, has to have coordinates U1, U2. This is W1, W2. 
and V is V1, V2. So. Right? So U1 plus W1 should be V1, which means U1 should be U1, uh, V1 minus W1. Now, U2 plus W2 should be equal to V2. Therefore, V2 minus W2 is equal to U2. So that's one of the ways to do it, uh, purely algebraically. Another way is just to draw a picture, and uh, you will see basically that it's exactly the same rule uh, as we used for addition would be applicable to subtraction of two vectors without going into many details. Uh, if you have these two vectors, this is V and this is W, then V minus W is this one, right? This is U equal V minus W. Now, W plus U gives you V, right? That, that's right. Now, and the if you compare the coordinates of these uh, points, the projections of these vectors on the x-axis, for instance, then obviously, uh, if this is A and this is B, uh, this is B1 and this is A1, then obviously, if you subtract from OB, you subtract OA1, you will get A1, B1, which is projection of this vector onto the x-axis, which is x, is, is first uh, x-coordinate in the tuple representation. And same thing with y, y coordinates. So either or, algebraically or, geome or geometrically, we can prove it. OK. Now, from this, from these two previous problems, uh, I would like to prove this Subtracting a vector is exactly the same as adding the vector which is opposite in direction in the same as length, which is multiplication by, one, by, by, by minus 1, uh, addition of this particular uh, opposite uh, vector. So it's like with numbers, right? right? 5 minus 3 is exactly the same as 5 plus minus 1 times 3, right? which is minus 3. Uh, now, with vectors, it's very simple, actually, to show. Well, um, one of the easiest way, for instance, is, OK, let's consider coordinate representation, tuple representation. Now, what do we have in this case? Well, the pre representation of this is v1, v2. This is w1, w2. And the difference, we already know, my previous problem is V1 minus W1 and V2 minus W2. Now, what about this? This is V1, V2, uh, V2 plus minus 1 times W1, W2. Now, this is, as we know, multiplication by a constant results in the multiplication of each component in the tuple representation. So it's exactly the same as minus w1, w2. Now, when you add these two things in the tuple representation, coordinates are added together. So v1 is added to w1. And v2 Same thing. Well, as you see, we have exactly the same result, which proves that uh, subtracting a vector is exactly the same as adding that vector multiplied by minus 1, or if you wish, adding an opposite, opposite vector. OK. Uh, the last problem is this one. 
the length of the sum of two vectors is less than or equal to lengths of the one plus lengths of another. Well, let's just consider this from the geometric perspective. perspective. We don't even need coordinates, quite frankly. Because if this is the v vector, now this is a w vector. This is a v plus w vector. What does it say? That the length of the sum is less than sum of, the, of these two lengths, which is uh, uh, a triangle inequality. It's inequality which is known for all the triangles. So geometrically, this is basically obvious. Its result, it, it results from the from the triangle inequality, which we learned before in uh, in the corresponding chapter related to geometry. But let's think about: can we do it algebraically? Um, not because it's better, but it might be really interesting to approach it not from the geometric perspective, but from the algebraic perspective, tabular representation and expression of the lengths in terms of uh, tuple components. Actually, we can do it. It's a little bit longer, but I think it, it has certain value just because you will uh, familiarize yourself with uh, manipulation with tuple representation. So, Let's say these are tuple representation, and I'm talking about two-dimensional case. That's easy. Now, the tuple representation of V plus W is V1 plus W1, V2 plus W2. Now, how is a norm or a length of the uh, vector with coordinates uh, x1, x2 expressed algebraically. Well, you know it's this one. That's Pythagorean theorem, and we spoke about this in the corresponding lecture about lengths of the vectors. So, what's this length? Well, it's a square root of first component square, which is v1 plus w1 square, and v2 plus second component square. That's on the left. That's what we have to prove. And this one, right, that's the length of this vector in tuple representation, less than or equal to length of the first one plus uh, length of the second one. Right? That's what we have to prove. Now, um, well, let's see if we can do it. Right? If we can do it algebraically, where all numbers, v1, v2, w1, w2, are just real numbers. Right? So this is a pure algebra. Prove this particular inequality. Well, let's see if we can do it. Uh, first of all, everything is positive here. So if we will prove instead of this, if we will prove uh, the square of this, it will be the same, right? It's equivalent. So we're talking about lengths, so everything is positive here. Uh, this is positive, and this is arithmetic value of the square root. All right, so let's square both sides. This square would be everything without the radical, obviously, and I will open up the parentheses. It would be v1 square plus 2v1, w1 plus w1 square plus v2 square, 2v2, w2 plus w2 square. Right? That's on the left. And we have to prove that this is less than or equal to square of this, which is square of the first one plus 2 square root of their product, v1 square plus v2 square, w1 square plus w2 square, 
was square root uh, square of this second component. That's what you have to put. Okay, now obviously we can reduce by this. Right? Everything goes out. And I will also reduce by, by, by 2. Because here 2, and this is 2, and this is 2. So what's remaining is V1, W1, plus V2, W2. That's on the left. Should be less than or equal to square root of well, let me multiply them. V1 square W1 square plus V2 square W1 square plus V1 W2 square plus V2 square W2 square. That's what they have to prove. Again, Let's just think about everything positive. I don't want to, to worry about the negative signs. Let's consider everything is positive. It's just easier to do it this way. So consider we are only dealing with vectors in the, in the first quadrant, because everything else would be exactly similar. Uh, it's just easier for me to, to go without thinking about um, uh, it, 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 not, not exactly being backward compatible. Uh, but in this case, uh, if, if everything is positive, then I don't have any problem with it. So, let's square it again, both sides. So, on the left, I will have V1 square, W1 square, plus 2W, plus 2, V1, V2, W1, W2, plus V2 square, W2 square, less than or equal to this. I will not change anything. Okay, now we have to reduce something, I guess. Uh, this one and this one. And this one and this one. So, what remains? This, this, and this. And I will transfer this to the right by subtracting uh, from both sides uh, 2v1, v2, w1, w2. And what I have is uh, v2, w1, square, square, plus v1, w2, square, square, minus 2v1, v, v2, W1, W2, and it should be greater than equal to zero, right? I just wrote it from right to left. So this is on the right, and this used to be on the left, but I put it also on the right with this minus sign. Now, what is this? Is this right? No. V1, W1, minus V1, W2, square. Square of this, which is this, minus 2 product, which is this, and square of this, which is this. And this is an obvious inequality, because this is a square, so it's greater than or equal to 0. Now, so from something which I have to prove, by squaring a couple of times and reducing whatever is necessary, I came to an obvious thing. 
Now, is everything is reversible? Well, almost, because as I said, in, in, in a couple of cases, I, I, I said, okay, let's just not think about negative sides. Um, I probably should go much more rigorously if I would really want to prove it in all the general cases. I can start with this and then gradually go backwards and reduce whatever um, the different cases uh, of negative coordinates or something else. I probably could have done it a little bit you know, more rigorously. But in any case, what I would like you to, to, uh, to, to see in this particular case, that I have used a purely algebraic approach to something which seems to be like a geometric problem, lengths of the, of the uh, vectors. In any case, it doesn't really matter that it's much longer. It's not for achieving the results. The purpose of this is not really to prove. I can prove it geometrically much simpler using the uh, triangle inequality. But then again, how do they prove the triangle inequality? I mean, that's also a separate thing. So that's why it's always interesting uh, to approach the problem from different sides to, 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 to get the same result. So this is a mental exercise rather than like, you know, something which you have to remember or anything like that. But if you think about this, everything I'm talking about here is basically your mental exercise, just to make your brain functioning. And it doesn't matter how you use it, what you use it, it it's all the same. It's all to train your brain to think creatively. Well, that said, that, that's it for today. Uh, um, these, uh, whatever, six problems are very, very easy. Uh, they're basically based on definitions of whatever the concepts we're talking about. Um, but why don't you just go through these prog problems again, just by yourself? Um, uh, they are uh, presented on the website, unizor.com. If you will go to vectors uh, part, in, uh, and the topic is vector arithmetic, that's the problems where uh, these that, that's where these problems are presented to you. So thanks very much and good luck.